Hello everybody, I'm Amber Price from Sapphire Souls here on Moonstruck TV and A1R Radio. I'm so happy to be back this week and ready to go. I hope everybody had a refreshing week full of mindfulness and maybe time to reset. And so today we're going to be talking about some interesting things about the energy in the universe today. This week has been absolutely crazy for the energy that's been just kind of boiling around everybody. And so um, as I'm doing my light work and I'm seeing clients this week and I'm navigating through my own personal life and all of the things that are going along with it, it is just more obvious that we're in a shift. So last time we met, we talked about um how the fall changes things and how we, you know, the the trees remind us that as the falls leave, the leaves lose, oh my goodness, the trees lose their leaves, (laughs) that we have a time for change. And so basically, um, this is reminding us that we have to really start to let go of some things. And so when we do let go of these things, what happens? Well, it creates more openness and more opportunity to feel lost or disconnected. Um, And that's necessary. You have to be able to, to feel something. And what we want to remember is that when we do feel something that might sound negative, it doesn't mean that it's bad or that you shouldn't be actually feeling those ways. And so... When you feel disconnected, it really just does remind us to be able to uh, make room for something, see what it is that's knocking on our door, and allow it to come on in. And so when we talk about the spiritual energy of this uh, week's universal energies, there seems to have brought a lot of anxiety for people, a lot of tension, a lot of feelings down. And so when we talk about how we're supposed to navigate through that and really feel like you can still get up and go every single day, it's really just time to self reflect. And when we are able to reflect, we're able to kind of get a little bit more of a grasp on what it is that the universe is trying to say to us. So today we're going to talk about our higher self and our higher self is really just that inner voice that gives you that gut feeling that, oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that, or I was right, I was right. And that's kind of the idea that, you know, you follow your gut instinct. It's like when, you know, you're in school, maybe some of you are still in school, which is amazing. It's always great to be a lifetime learner. And your teacher always said, don't change your answer. If you have multiple choice, you pick and go with your first gut instinct. And so this is what we're guided by. Our spiritual higher self is giving us that, um, you know, compass to guide us. And so when you have time to actually sit in silence or to allow yourself to really spend time doing something that you really like to do, it gives you that time to really reflect on what it is that you might be lacking in your life or what you want more of and to really set the goals and really achieve them. And so this week we found that there, you know, the energies were really talking about, you know, self-doubt. And so the ego or the mind is really supposed to create a very safe environment for ourselves. And so the brain is doing what it's supposed to do. And the ego is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to say, wait a minute, this is way too risky. And I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to put myself out there. And so the brain is doing what it's supposed to do. But through that energy, the dense energy of our of our mind and of our ego, you have the spiritual soul, the higher self that's really trying to get through. And it actually isn't that difficult to hear it. We just have to choose to hear it. And so when we do, we are often faced with more doors that are opening or you know, windows that are opening, you get to crawl through. Um, the more you say yes, to opportunities, the more opportunities that you're going to get. So the more that you're open to abundance, the more abundance you're going to get. And so it really is a choice. And that choice is really important because you can choose 
a whole bunch of different things that your life is going to be made up of. And so it may be a mix of choosing to deny yourself of something that you really do deserve. And so how I'm seeing it and the universe is kind of reminding this week that the only way you're going to achieve the goals that your higher self needs to achieve here in the physical world, in this human experience, is if you actually take the time to be able to adjust your plan and say, I am no longer going to fear taking a risk because every single person here on this planet is here doing the exact same thing. And so what happens is, you know, other people might be in our ear and saying like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Or, you know, you can't make a living out of something like that. Um, You know, I was speaking to a few people this week in my life coaching, and it's an often said thing to people that, you know, oh, you can't make a living being an artist. You can't do photography. Oh my goodness, what are you thinking? You can't switch your career halfway through your work life. And so basically, you know, challenge yourself to say, why can't I? What's the biggest thing that I'm going to lose in trying? Because I guarantee the only thing that you're going to lose is that dread every day of going through the same cycle, the same routine, the same everything. And so when you actually um, take a leap of faith and put your whole heart and soul into something, you can never lose because your soul is guiding you. But you can hear those self, that self-doubt, right? So you've got, you know, well, you know what? I make enough money, so I should just be happy with what I have. At least I have a job. Or at least my relationship is not that bad and I should just be grateful for, you know, what I have. So it doesn't matter what it is in your life you're trying to change. If it's deciding to go back to school, you can talk yourself out of it. If it's deciding to change careers, you can talk yourself out of that too. But I can tell you something, and this is from our spiritual team. So our guides, our angels, you know, those that are wise and trying to share this information with us, it is as easy to talk yourself into it and to really follow your life's purpose and your plan. So, so really try to manifest what it is that you want to achieve. Now, when we're talking about how does our, our higher self help us? So how do like Amber, how does it help me to understand how I'm supposed to connect to my loved ones more by just deciding to change my job or to make a change in my life in any capacity? And the answer has been given to me. And so after asking the same question, because of course, I've always had these same questions that you guys will have. The answer is, if your energy is consumed with a negative vibe, whether it's worry or fear or concern, any of those things cause a very, very dense energy. And so you can't communicate with your higher self. You can't hear from your angels and guides. You can't hear from your loved ones in spirit as easily and as fluidly if you were to actually be living on your authentic path. And so this is getting the fulfillment, the satisfaction, um, being an inspiration and a leader and really taking um, control of your life. And so it's really reminding us this week that if you're feeling uncomfortable, in any area of your life, you need to make a change. And so this is just kind of like putting those voices in your head aside. Maybe it's not, you know, just the voices in your head. Maybe it's actually friends and family or um, other people that you've talked to about your goals that they're just like, you know, this is maybe scary or risky. And so the only way that you're going to figure this out is if you actually give it a shot. So we've got today... Fall is reminding us to change. So how we would understand if we're supposed to be changing right now is if we're feeling uncomfortable, if we're really, really getting anxious feelings or um, sadness or feeling of disconnect. And so um, more and more, we're feeling like this is something that I have to choose to live with. And that is not necessarily the case either. And so when you actually look at what it is that uh, you want to change, then it's easy. You've got, what is my timeline? How do I get there? 
And you're not alone because you shouldn't ever feel like you need to do something alone. Whether you can depend on someone that is already in your life or whether you find a mentor in your area that you're actually able to depend upon to see how they did it and to to join forces with other like-minded people that are able to kind of build this up for you. And then you've got the action. So you've got your timelines, you've got your mentor, you've got your like-minded people, and now you actually need a plan of action. And so um, what steps are you taking, your personal accountability, in order to make those changes? Because when you're coming for a psychic reading or a medium reading and you're looking for your loved ones or your spirit guides to give you guidance, they're only going to be able to give you insight into certain things and the uh, all of it resolves around if you're able to make the commitment or take that first step. So they cannot deliver things to you that you're not willing to accept or you're ready to to take on. So so don't forget that when we're talking about um you know what can you tell me about the future and how can my family and friends or my spirit guides help me? Well, they can definitely show you different paths. They can light up different ways for you to kind of uh, see things from a different perspective and maybe have some great ideas and insight into this. But it's up to you in your human experience to take those actions. And so the other thing about action is that You really need to change your action in order to actually change how you're feeling. And so when we do get stuck in these ruts, and I'm talking about like getting into the monotonous, like, oh, I've got to go to my job every single day, or I wake up and I do the same thing and it's over and over and over. And I really just can't crack this. And, you know, something must be wrong with me because it's just the same thing over and over and everything is happening to me and how come it's all about me and I must have done something wrong in a previous life or I'm being punished for something. Those are all ways that your ego are is validating your feeling of safety in this rut or in this safe zone that you've created for yourself because you already know what that feels like. So we already know that it's comfortable here we may not like it but we already know what it does to us and so we stay there and so what happens is if it looks like we have to change something we might actually feel like it could be better for us but what happens is we've never been there before so our ego will say whoa I don't know how that's going to make me feel and I already know that this is comfy so I'm going to stay right here so The only way to get through that, though, is to make the leap and to actually get yourself out of that situation and into a new situation in order to feel that feeling. And so it's going to take some time to reprogram yourselves, right? Because you've got already maybe days or weeks or years or decades of really having that same, um, you know, role in your life that this thing has provided you. So whether it is the job or it's the relationship or it's um, caring for sick family members, you already know what that role provides for you. And so now you need to trust, what does my life look like without having that in my life? Like, who am I now? And so it's not as simple as, you know, your friends like, well, quit your job. It's okay. Go ahead. You're, you're going to have fun. It's going to be great. Just, just try But the other aspects include, really, it's a new routine for you. It's new people. It's a new community, which brings new energy, which you have to adjust to. You have to learn, which takes energy and is very tiring, as you know. And so when you're adjusting or changing your plan and making your goals, make sure you allow time in order to really um, be able to adjust to to all of those things because if you're not you're setting yourself up to kind of get back into that comfort zone and you might want to bail out and kind of be like that sucked I didn't have a good experience and I really really feel disappointed because you know what everybody was right I didn't make it work and so here I am again in the same thing and nothing ever works for me and so um so your so your spirit guides and your angels and You know, your whole spiritual team are here today to remind you that this week in particular in the universe, it is really, really challenging you to take that leap into something new um, or at least to start making the decisions that you know in your self-awareness 
aware of what is it that you're actually benefiting from in your current life and what could you be doing to benefit even more and so you know you could have everything already sorted out you have already taken all these leaps and you're really into it and you're you're like amber i've i've had my goals i've set my timelines i've got my action i'm in it i'm doing it i love it but i don't know what now because i've been doing this and now i'm like I feel like something's lacking still. And so that's how you know you're ascending because you can't stay in one thing for too long. So recently doing a meditation, I had asked, because one of the things that I, I find interesting is, you know, here in here in Canada and on Ontario, some kids are about 17, 18 years old when they graduate grade 12 high school. And at that point, they're really supposed to know what it is that they want to do with the rest of their life career-wise. And, you know, in most cases, by grade nine or 10, they're supposed to be at 14, 15 years old, really setting up what classes they're even taking in order to get to that goal in grade 12, to be able to be uh, connected to post-secondary education to get to that goal. So if you're thinking about the fact that you don't even really know who you are at that point, And who you are at 17, 18, 19 years old is going to be very different than who you are at, you know, 27, 28, 29 years old. And so when this happens, you can't expect that you're going to be okay with the one career choice for the rest of your life. So this is something that during my meditation, they really helped enlighten because what I've noticed in my career as a life coach and and a a psychic and a medium is that most people are not fulfilled with the job that they're doing because it's not what their soul's purpose is. And so if I know what my soul's purpose is, then I have fulfillment, which equals success. And so when I have a successful life, it doesn't matter how much money you're earning. It doesn't matter how many kids you have or how many cars you have parked in your driveway. You are have the energy that's radiating out of you and it screams satisfaction fulfillment it's just radiating like the like the sun from your energy so it's really just deciding to know you can pick your career out of high school and you can do it for five to ten years And in five to 10 years, if you're starting to feel the itch and you really need to make the changes, you might just have to tweak your area that you're actually in. So if you're already in healthcare, maybe you're going from, you know, um, one level of nursing to another. Or if you're in law, maybe you're going from, you know, legal assistant to to lawyer. It doesn't matter. You could completely switch. You could be a lawyer and then all of a sudden want to open a restaurant and completely abandon law and uh, and just completely go into a different field altogether. And this is okay. And so we really have to get rid of that notion that the disappointment is coming along with those changes. Um, People feel like if I make a change in my career and I don't know what I'm doing, or I've been flip-flopping between uh, careers or jobs, that it kind of puts off an energy that, you know, I'm flighty or I'm indecisive or I really don't know what I'm doing. and, And there's a lot of time and energy and potentially resources that are wasted in going through these ventures. But what actually is being told and taught to us by this is that your soul is challenging you to put yourself first and to put your needs first. And when you do that, you can serve the community, the world, humans around you with much more intensity and like fulfillment and purpose. And so the meaningfulness behind the work that you're doing goes from here to way up here. And so when that happens, you become successful because if you can get your role in life and really have the passion behind it, that's what gets you success. That's what gets you fulfillment. And so from there, that's when you get to navigate the map of your, your next part of your life. And it takes you in whatever direction that you want. And so right now, is the time to really start crafting up a plan to decide. And I really feel that there are too many people right now that are really deciding to just 
play it safe and stay where they are and really not rock the boat and really put themselves out there because it's uncomfortable. And so I, what I say is, you know, it's short term discomfort. And so if I'm looking at, you know, changing my job, I'm just using careers because this is actually the the week in which people are being tested for this. So, um, so if I change my job, I might have three to six months of discomfort, but if I stay where I am, I am guaranteed to have 15, 25, 35 years of discomfort. And so really just kind of weigh it out because if it's really just a short term commitment, you know, you're going to get somewhere in the long run. The other thing is that, when you want to communicate to figure out what it is that your life purpose is, you don't just have one. Like people think that it's just one life purpose that you're here to achieve. And sometimes that is true for some souls. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes you might have multiple purposes. And so, um, you know, for instance, I knew that from a very young age, probably three years old, I was meant to be a mom. And so that was just something that I knew if I could have had 12 children, I probably would have. And so, um, you know, I joke about that all the time. And I just say, say, I would have just kept going. And so um, I also know that I'm supposed to be a light worker. And so this did take me some time to figure out along my career. And so when this comes up, it's, not a choice. I don't have to choose to be a mom or a light worker. And I don't have to choose between those things. It's a mesh. It's what I'm supposed to be achieving. And so, um, so all of you might have this same situation in which you're like, I really love doing this, but I really love doing this. And I can't choose between the two. And, and, and your soul is not asking you to, it's not asking you to choose. It's asking you to make room for everything. So How do you know what your life's purpose is? How do you hear it? How do you get to the point where you feel like you even know that what you're doing, even if you have passion for it, is true? And so this is a few pointers. If you can actually reflect on what makes you happy when you're not being paid, that's your number one purpose in life. So if you absolutely love to garden and you get joy and fulfillment out of it and you're like, you know, I could work outside every single day of my life. Maybe you're really meant to be in horticulture, landscaping, design, architecture. And so this is something that you kind of have to decide. It might not be the traditional sense of it. You might not be able to think that, um, you know, maybe I physically can't handle doing this job every single day. Well, why are you thinking it has to be the same as what you're doing? All you have to get to is that industry, to that passion that you have and create what makes you sing and what makes your soul sing. And so um, a lot of times the most successful people are the ones that are really taking something they enjoy doing or are very um, intuitively drawn to do to help other people. And they just started doing it and it became their career. It became their passion and their life's purpose. And so, so you don't have to stick with tradition is what I'm saying. You don't have to be a teacher, a lawyer, a veterinarian, a doctor, uh, you know, a financial advisor. All of those ones are the ones that, you know, even when you do career counseling, those are the ones that keep popping up. There's not usually things outside of that. And when they are, Um, There's a big gap um, between what it is. You've got the high professional levels of education, and then you might go right down to the very technical levels or lower. And so um, what we're missing is what's in between all of that? And what can I do to change the way that people see how work in the community is valuable? And so that's a lot of times where people um, have worked their whole entire life and they've decided that all of a sudden, you know, what actually makes me proud and fulfilled is by helping others in a very um, not profitable way. And so sometimes people will dedicate the rest of their retired life to uh, volunteering, fundraising and working with not for profits. And so this is what makes them sing. And they take that and they run with it and they become very successful for that cause. Okay, so you've got to look at what it is that you enjoy doing when you're not being paid. Number one. Number two, give yourself time. There's no rush. You've already been doing this for X number of days, weeks, years, months. And so there's no rush to get moving um, in order to like jump off a cliff that you don't know there's a net at the bottom. So you always should have a plan. And by saying this, you don't just 
you don't just make quick decisions. You have a plan. You make a choice. You do the thing and execute it successfully. And so when you're looking at this and you're making the plan and you're taking the time to do it, you also need the time to understand what it incorporates. And so you might have to do meditation, going for walks, quieting your brain. Some people love doing dishes or, um, you know, having a bath. And those things will actually allow you to really successfully hear your higher self. Because when you're talking, you're not listening. And when you're not listening, you're missing cues that are extremely important. Um, They might be giving you information like, okay, don't take this job, even though you're being offered, it doesn't feel right. And the panic sets in, oh man, I need any job. So I'm just going to take this, even though you knew right away, your soul was saying this, does not feel good to me. So number three, feel what you feel. Trust your instincts, trust your gut, go back to that. Listen to yourself, listen to your higher self because it knows exactly where you're supposed to be. And then you might have those feelings of deja vu. So all of a sudden you're sitting in this job you absolutely love and you took it and you're so happy and you're you're in a maybe in a board meeting or something and you're like, whoa, I've had this happen before. This is deja vu. This is your soul's way of saying, you did it. You're on the right path. You, you got here, you did it. But not at all does it mean that in six months, you're actually not going to change this, that this is something that you're stuck in. You're always evolving. You're always changing. You're always moving. And you can attest to that because technology is always changing and moving and grooving. And we're always keeping up with technology. So trust yourself, trust the plan. Really just think of yourself as, you know, what is my higher self doing? Is it is it programmed like you know, a a computer technology piece. And so every, so often we need to update this and we need to really just kind of allow a download and an update. And so when you're doing all of these things, I want you just to trust in the process, work with hearing your higher self this week. And so when you do that, you're going to be able to really hone in on what it is that your soul desires. And that's what life is. It's fulfillment and finding what you can do to contribute to the community. I am so excited to be able to bring this message to you. Thank you to Moonstruck TV. See you next week.